Section 10 of A Sentimental Journey Through France and Italy. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Martin Giessen. A Sentimental Journey Through France and Italy by Lawrence Stern. Section 10 when a man can contest the point by dint of equipage and carry all on floundering before him with half a dozen of lackeys and a couple of cooks tis very well in such a place as paris he may drive in at which end of a street he will a poor prince who is weak in cavalry and whose whole infantry does not exceed a single man had best quit the field and signalize himself in the cabinet if he can get up into it i say up into it for there is no descending perpendicular amongst them with a me voici mes enfants here i am whatever many may think i own my first sensations as soon as i was left solitary and alone in my own chamber in the hotel were far from being so flattering as i had prefigured them i walked up gravely to the window in my dusty black coat and looking through the glass saw all the world in yellow blue and green running at the ring of pleasure the old with broken lances and in helmets which had lost their visards the young in armour bright which shone like gold beplumed with each gay feather of the east all all tilting at it like fascinated knights in tournaments of yore for fame and love alas poor yorick cried i what art thou doing here on the very first onset of all this glittering clatter thou art reduced to an atom seek seek some winding alley with a tourniquet at the end of it where chariot never rolled or flambeau shot its rays there thou mayest solace thy soul in converse sweet with some kind grisette of a barber's wife and get into such coteries may i perish if i do said i pulling out the letter which i had to present to madame de r i'll wait upon this lady the very first thing i do so i called la fleur to go seek me a barber directly and come back and brush my coat the wig paris when the barber came he absolutely refused to have anything to do with my wig twas either above or below his art i had nothing to do but to take one ready-made of his own recommendation but i fear friend said i this buckle won't stand you may immerge it replied he into the ocean and it will stand what a great scale is everything upon in this city thought i the utmost stretch of an english periwig maker's ideas could have gone no further than to have dipped it into a pail of water what difference tis like time to eternity i confess i do hate all cold conceptions as i do the puny ideas which engender them and am generally so struck with the great works of nature that for my own part if i could help it i never would make a comparison less than a mountain at least all that can be said against the french sublime in this instance of it is this 
that the grandeur is more in the word and less in the thing no doubt the ocean fills the mind with vast ideas but paris being so far inland it was not likely i should run post a hundred miles out of it to try the experiment the parisian barber meant nothing the pail of water standing beside the great deep makes certainly but a sorry figure in speech but twill be said it has one advantage tis in the next room and the truth of the buckle may be tried in it without more ado in a single moment in honest truth and upon a more candid revision of the matter the french expression professes more than it performs i think i can see the precise and distinguishing marks of national characters more in these nonsensical minutiae than in the most important matters of state where great men of all nations talk and stalk so much alike that i would not give ninepence to choose amongst them i was so long in getting from under my barber's hands that it was too late to think of going with my letter to madame r that night but when a man is once dressed at all points for going out his reflections turn to little account so taking down the name of the hotel de modene where i lodged i walked forth without any determination where to go i shall consider of that said i as i walk along the pulse paris hail ye small sweet courtesies of life for smooth do ye make the road of it like grace and beauty which beget inclinations to love at first sight tis ye who open this door and let the stranger in pray madame said i have the goodness to tell me which way i must turn to go to the opera comique most willingly monsieur said she laying aside her work i had given a cast with my eye into half a dozen shops as i came along in search of a face not likely to be disordered by such an interruption till at last this hitting my fancy i had walked in she was working a pair of ruffles as she sat in a low chair on the far side of the shop facing the door très volontiers most willingly said she laying her work down upon a chair next to her and rising up from the low chair she was sitting in with so cheerful a movement and so cheerful a look that had i been laying out fifty louis d'or with her i should have said this woman is grateful you must turn monsieur said she going with me to the door of the shop and pointing the way down the street i was to take you must turn first to your left hand mais prenez garde there are two turns and be so good as to take the second then go down a little way and you'll see a church and when you are past it give yourself the trouble to turn directly to the right and that will lead you to the foot of the pont neuf which you must cross and there any one will do himself the pleasure to show you she repeated her instructions three times over to me with the same good-natured patience the third time as the first and if tones and manners have a meaning which certainly they have unless to hearts which shut them out she seemed really interested that i should not lose myself i will not suppose it was the woman's beauty 
notwithstanding she was the handsomest grisette i think i ever saw which had much to do with the sense i had of her courtesy only i remember when i told her how much i was obliged to her that i looked very full in her eyes and that i repeated my thanks as often as she had done her instructions i had not got ten paces from the door before i found i had forgot every tittle of what she had said so looking back and seeing her still standing in the door of the shop as if to look whether i went right or not i returned back to ask her whether the first turn was to my right or left for that i had absolutely forgot is it possible said she half laughing tis very possible replied i when a man is thinking more of a woman than of her good advice as this was the real truth she took it as every woman takes a matter of right with a slight curtsy attendez said she laying her hand upon my arm to detain me whilst she called a lad out of the back shop to get ready a parcel of gloves i am just going to send him said she with a packet into that quarter and if you will have the complaisance to step in it will be ready in a moment and he shall attend you to the place so i walked in with her to the far side of the shop and taking up the ruffle in my hand which she laid upon the chair as if i had a mind to sit she sat down herself in her low chair and i instantly sat myself down beside her he will be ready monsieur said she in a moment and in that moment replied i most willingly would i say something very civil to you for all these courtesies any one may do a casual act of good nature but a continuation of them shows it is part of the temperature and certainly added i if it is the same blood which comes from the heart which descends to the extremes touching her wrist i am sure you must have one of the best pulses of any woman in the world feel it said she holding out her arm so laying down my hat i took hold of her fingers in one hand and applied the two forefingers of my other to the artery would to heaven my dear eugenius thou hadst passed by and beheld me sitting in my black coat and in my lackadaisical manner counting the throbs of it one by one with as much true devotion as if i had been watching the critical ebb or flow of her fever how wouldst thou have laughed and moralized upon my new profession and thou shouldst have laughed and moralized on trust me my dear eugenius i should have said there are worse occupations in this world than feeling a woman's pulse but a grisette thou wouldst have said and in an open shop yorick so much the better for when my views are direct eugenius i care not if all the world saw me feel it hmm. End of section ten. Recording by Martin Geeson in Hazelmere, Surrey.